Hello, it is Wednesday, but we're pretending that it's Tuesday and then it's Reviews Day Tuesday, and this week I am reviewing Mr. Robot Season 2. I'm running a bit late, but everything's fine. So I have already reviewed Season 1 of Mr. Robot only about four months ago. I will link to that review below. Season 2 picks up a month later. How do I describe the plot without spoilers? F Society is trying to capitalise on the events of Season 1 with regards to Evil Corp, and Elliot is battling with Mr. Robot. That might be the best I can do. I watched this season over the course of a couple of weeks. Season 1 I binge watched, but Season 2 I kind of took it slightly slower. I enjoyed this season a lot. I think that Season 2 has less of a really obvious plot than Season 1. Season 1 had a very strong plot, whereas Season 2 has a lot more going on in separate strands. But I think I actually preferred season two. It's such an endlessly inventive show in the way the story is told, and I found that very evident in season two. I also felt like the audience was more of a character in season two. You know, from the beginning of the show, the audience has been a character. We have been Elliot's imaginary friend who he talks to. But in season two, our relationship with Elliot is more important to the plot and to what we see. There's this whole unreliable narrator thing going on, which is quite rare in a visual medium, but I loved it. I loved being involved in the show. I loved being, you know, kind of a character. I also love how much focus was put on other characters, uh, the other F Society hackers, Darlene, Angela, the FBI. I really like Dom. I really like Leon and Ray as well, two other new characters. As a person who, as you may know, is completely obsessed with fictional characters, Season 2 gave me a lot to enjoy. I also love the presence of flashbacks, which gave us answers to some of the questions from Season 1, and also that in general we got a lot of answers to the questions in Season 1. Of course there are a lot of new questions. So many questions. The show does walk a fine line between being clever and being just confusing. I found myself getting lost more in Season 2 than I did in Season 1. I didn't mind this when the reason was because Elliot was withholding things from us, because that's a really great part of the show. But I did mind it when I felt like I was just falling behind and losing track of what was happening. In season one, there's a goal, right? A, an obvious goal, to hack Evil Corp. Whereas in season two, the goal is less clear until the very end, which makes it easier to get lost because you don't have the character's end game to guide you through. It's easier to be confused by why this is happening or why this particular character is doing this. But overall, despite this, I did love season two. It's such a fun show to watch visually, it looks so beautiful and dynamic. The cast are ridiculously good. Romy Malik continues to just be outstanding as Elliot. I also really warm to Angela this season, and I think I know the reason why. When Portia Doubleday plays Angela as upset or confused or sad, she looks so young. And I love that Angela is such a capable, smart person, and she knows what she wants, and she works hard to get there. And, you know, she does pretty well at, at getting where she wants to go. She's achieved a lot, but when things get on top of her, she's confused or sad or scared. She looks so young, and it just really endeared her to me as a character in a way that she hadn't really endeared to me before. You know, because Angela is a character that I don't really relate to at all. A lot of her decisions are quite opaque, and they're also often decisions that I wouldn't make myself. But Doubleday has managed to make her a character that I still root for a lot of the time, which is no mean feat. I don't want what you want, and I don't really understand why you want it, but I want you to have it. I also really think that Carly Chaikin has come into her own this year as Darlene, and Martin Wallstrom as Tyrell as well. You know, the former is more present this season, she's taking charge more, and Tyrell is a lot less present this year, but Wallstrom gives all his scenes a big impact. You know, it feels like Tyrell was in season two far more than he actually was. So yeah, those are my thoughts on season two of Mr. Robot. I can't wait for season three. I mean, as I've said before, so many questions. I'm just really excited about the show. It's so different and imaginative and surprising and inspiring. I'm now starting it again from the beginning and I can't wait to watch it all again. I will give Mr. Robot season 2 4.6 out of 5. So next week I am supposed to be reviewing Crime and Punishment for the Quiet as Mouse book club. As is perhaps predictable, I am nowhere near finishing it. So I might push that review back a week or two, but I will keep you updated. If I don't review it next Tuesday, I will try to review something else. And I think I know what that something else will be and I am excited. My next video will be at the weekend, I suspect, so I hope you have a great week until then and I will see you soon.